USPS is not known for an early delivery, usually ever, but today I got my black tie bond order early. Let's get into some first impressions. Woo! All right, black tie bond released three new luxury designer fragrances and, and it was really casual. Someone was commenting in one of the groups about the best Baccarat and he just popped in there and was like, mine launching next week. And I was like, what the f so I got those. I picked up a bunch of others for fall. I have everything but one scent in my fall lineup done, finalized, except this one. So I'm hoping one of these in here is the gap that I'm looking to fill. So let's get into it. Let's start with the designer fragrances first. And you know what we have to start with. The Baccarat, right? Right, okay, we're on the same page. All right, let's just take a quick look at the fragrance notes. They've got the top is white jasmine and violets. The mid is amberwood and oak moss. Okay, and the, uh, the bottom is musk, tonka bean, and amber. That's interesting. I'm looking for saffron and some ambergris, maybe even some cedar. All right, let's get into it. Oh yeah, I mean, Baccarat for sure. Oh, it's good, it's good. If you haven't seen my previous Battle of the Fragrance Oils, I did three Baccarats from three different companies, head to head. You can check that out right here. If you are a Nosmic, this may smell like nothing to you. Um, if you are familiar with the fragrance, it's generally a very light fragrance. So this one on the strip is good, it's strong. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's like a little sweeter. Here's what I did do. I put my, my best, strongest Baccarat on a separate blotter strip just so we can do a little comparison in real time. So I'm gonna smell that. Okay, you know what's interesting? They smell exactly the same, except the black tie bond one is definitely stronger. There's no difference, except that it's stronger, which even in the dry down, oh man, I love this one. Pro tip, if you are having a lot of trouble with this, I blend this with some Palo Santo and it really helps prop it up. So the Baccarat totally shines. I absolutely love it. It's so good, but I think this now has replaced my my other favorite, I also said it in that video. It's very important to have quality fragrances where you, yeah, you can get a Baccarat that is like a shadow of Baccarat and it doesn't really smell it. So I think you're doing yourself, your product and your clients a disservice by not getting the best of the best. All right, I love it. It's so good and it's so strong. Nice, well done. All right, let's get into the Tobacco Lux. This is inspired by Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. This is another fantastic one. I can't wait to see how it compares. All right, the top is amber lemon tobacco. The mid is jasmine, lavender, interesting, hints of cocoa. I love to blend lavender into a lot of stuff. Uh, bottom is vanilla, sandalwood, moss, patchouli, musk, guaiacwood, and tonka. Okay, the moss and the patchouli in here is very interesting. Let's see how it smells. Okay, this is more of like a cologne take. I'm not getting a lot of the tobacco or the vanilla. It's, yeah, uh-huh. I would say that the musk patchouli moss, that sort of trio is really front and center for me. This doesn't smell like the tobacco vanilla that I'm familiar with. Hmm, but you know, I do have my favorite here, reset. Yeah, the tobacco vanilla is way sweeter. It's more vanilla tobacco forward with musk. Yeah, I think that's what's missing from here, from the tobacco Lux, is it's missing the vanilla. And I don't see it in the notes, doesn't mean it's not in here. That's the, the missing component for me to make this feel close to inspired by, but it smells pretty different. It smells good. Let me say that. It smells sexy, you know, like a sexy guy, sexy man. I like it. It just needs to be sweeter with the vanilla. It's good though. All right, let's get into the Tam Dao Fog. This is inspired by Diptyque's Tam Dao. I am not familiar with this uh, perfume or this fragrance, but when I read the notes, I was like, yeah. All right, the top is Red Cypress. The mid is Sandalwood and Rosewood. Mm. And the base is cedarwood and musk. 
Okay. Come on. Oh my gosh. Dang, that is so good. So there's a powderiness in here that I am loving. And I bet you on the dry down, it'll get even softer and more prominent. Oh yeah, creating a mystical forcey mountain vibe. It is, it is super earthy, like mossy. It smells like it's got a little wetness, maybe some petrichor. And then it's got this powder that is so good. Oh shoot. Oh man. That is incredible. I absolutely love this. All right, let's switch gears from the designer inspired oils and let's get into some, some fall vibes. And the first one we're gonna get into is the first snow. All right, and the notes are top is pine, green, fir, lemon, and marine. The middle is mint and eucalyptus. Oh boy. The base, musk, sandalwood, sweet, patchouli, cedarwood, and vanilla. If you're new to my channel, eucalyptus and I, we don't see eye to eye. I love it, it doesn't love me back. So let the coughing fits begin. Oh shoot. Okay, this smells like you walked outside and it is crisp, cold air, like right into your face. And that's probably the mint and the eucalyptus. Oh shoot. Oh my gosh, that is dumb. That is so nuts. Okay, wow. It really does smell like the first snow, the name of it. <laughs> All right, this is bonkers. Yeah, it, it really is. It captures that cold air, that cold outside air. Oh, that is excellent. Okay, first snow, I love it. And the eucalyptus isn't strangling me right now. This is fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's check out the lodge. This one was really appealing to me. I mean, all of these creatives are pretty incredible. The top is spruce, birch leaf, aldehydic, clove, apple, cedar leaf, and lemon. The middle is eucalyptus, jasmine, and clove. The base is vanilla, patchouli, musk, tonka, and sandalwood. These are all of my favorite things. <laughs> okay. So at first I'm getting hit with like a lemony pine and it's giving me like a bit of a pine sol vibe, which I'm not loving. It kind of smells like, you know, you, you rent an Airbnb or VRB or whatever, and you go in and like they've just cleaned. It kind of has that kind of scent to it, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, that, 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 that lemon and... Maybe it's not pine, maybe it's the birch or the spruce. I love spruce and birch, but this is, um, it's not, it's not, uh, it's just giving very strong cleaner vibes. Not a fan of this one. That's the lodge. All right, let's get into the peculiar pine. The creative for this is gorgeous as well. It's just got these bundles of thyme mixed in with the pine tree. It's so good. All right, the top is pine and thyme. I can smell the thyme with it just sitting here on the blotter strip. The middle is patchouli and sage dalmatian. The base is camphor, musk, and cedar wood. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, it is piney and thymey. Ooh, that is so good. What a, what a unique take on sort of if you were looking to do maybe a Christmas tree type scent or like a Christmas Eve type scent. It's really good. It's very time forward, like time pine, pine time. Say that 10 times fast. It's excellent. This is so good. It's so unique. Mmm. Mmm. Not getting a ton of the patchouli. Oh my gosh. The sage. It. This is so good. This is all of those like wintry herbs that you use in the season. You've got your thyme, your sage. Mmm. That is, that is excellent. The Peculiar Pine, wow. Wow, I'm into it. Woo! This is, uh, I have high hopes for this one. The Cranberry Fire. The creative is dope, let's just say that. The creative is so dope. All right, top notes are cinnamon, orange, nutmeg, and cranberry. The middle is clove. The base is tonka, vanilla, and amber. Like I could already smell it on just sitting here on the table. Holy moly, ho. Oh. 
Okay. This is the truest, tattiest cranberry. It's real, it's not fake, it's not been, you know, bogged down with a lot of sweetness. It is, um, oh my gosh, it is, oh wow. Everything is just like happening in, in my nose developing. Okay, this is so good. So this little guy, or girl, uh, I'm really hoping that I can blend this with these other two oils. I've been trying to, this is the gap in my line for the fall season and I think this is it. I need to put it in wax, which we'll do. We're gonna put a bunch of these in some wax. We're gonna do some blends. Okay, so it's got like that cinnamon, cinnamon hots, you know? Um, then with the cranberry, it is so perfectly, good. like that is so good. It's, it's like all of the spices, but the cranberry is tat, which I like, I love. <sighs> okay, okay, cranberry fire, you are fire. Mm. All right, the sassy pumpkin, y'all. Let's see what this is all about. I don't do a lot of gourmand or food type scents. It's just not what sells for me in my product line or what my clients like. However, I do, I'm trying to find something that isn't totally gourmandy like pumpkin cheesecake or, you know, maple walnut pecan waffle fries. And it's like, the sassy pumpkin sounded very interesting to me, just like the cranberry fire. So something that still could be like borderline gourmand, but not like a traditional gourmand. So in comes the sassy pumpkin. Top is clove, cinnamon, cardamom, Elemi, the middle is cream. We have a base of tonka, sweet, musk, and vanilla. What I like about this is he is grabbing all of the spices and notes from a chai and combining them with a pumpkin, which I think is very interesting. And that's, I guess, what makes her sassy. So let's get into it. <clears throat> I think I'm broken. Sometimes when I'm smelling an oil, it smells like budded popcorn. Am I having an aneurysm? Okay. Okay. Let's just take a beat. Let's, she just needed to dry down. Am I gendering oils? Yes. Don't at me. Okay. Just, you know, I'm getting all the chai spices first. They are so good. And then it's followed by the pumpkin. This definitely needs to go in some wax. And this is, uh, so I'm just gonna call myself out. This is because I don't have a ton of experience smelling a lot of like foodie gourmandy scents because I smell them and I hate them and I move on. Not that they are bad, that's a me problem. So I just wanna state that, take all of this as with anything on this channel with a huge grain of salt. This is just my opinion, my interpretation. So two cents. Yeah, this is good. It still has a hint of like budded popcorn, Again, I'm broken, that's me. I need to refine my palette when it comes to these types of fragrances. It's good. It needs to go in wax for me. This one is exciting to me because white oak and vanilla, I was like, I'm in. Uh, it's called the silk oak. I love white oak and vanilla. I would say if I had to put myself in, uh, classify myself as a fragrance, it would be white oak and vanilla. I love it. Earthy, sweet. All right, the silk oak, the top, stone fruit, green leaves. The middle is leather, patchouli, and cedar leaf. The base is vanilla, smoke, and dark woods. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, ooh. I like, okay, I like this version. I like this way better because it's uh, it's more earthy forward. Mmm. Oh yeah, I would say maybe it's the dark woods and cedar leaf that I'm getting, but it's just very earthy. Oh shoot, and it's sweet. You've got the vanilla there. All right, this is the best white oak and vanilla I have come across. Oh yeah. I think it's perfect. Like the patchouli is there with the vanilla and like some mossy greeny, greenery, <laughs> greeny. Yeah, that's what that is for me. Oh, dang. Oh, I freaking love that. The, this type of oil for me is definitely for body products though. I think this would, this is probably the strongest one I've smelled. I think would do well in a candle as well, like all applications. Shoot. Oh my, I'm, I already know what I'm gonna do with this. Okay, not for this season, so. For next season. I, the Silk Oak, fantastic, amazing. All right, Brian, the love after death. 
I am very excited about this. Let's take a look at the notes. Top, clove, smoky, and green apple. Mm. The mid is pine, fir, and rose. The base is sweet, sandalwood, guaiac wood, musk, and tonka. I love this creative. It's so, it's so beautiful. Love after death. A love that never dies. It's beautiful, it's poetic. I love everything about it. Let's see how it smells. I smell frankincense very strongly on the strip, so is there frankincense in here? I didn't read that. Charcoal, rose, and frankincense. Well, of course. <laughs> Oof. Oh my gosh, this, I love, 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 love this. This smells so familiar though. Like I feel like there's something I have that is familiar to this. So here's what I'm getting. It's like a, it's like an ashy burnt smoky. So it's not as heavy as like a burnt wood type smell or like an incense. It's got, they've nailed this perfectly like ashy charcoal fragrance. <sighs> Dang. And the, the rose, it, this is like, it's not your old lady grandma rose. This is like a very soft background rose. And then everything else is so good. Oh my gosh. I don't think I'm getting any of like the pine or the fir, but like the sandalwood, cause it's sweet with the tonka, the musk. Mm. What is this? I'm going to figure it out. I need to go look in my oils. This smells like something similar to what I have. I'll find it. I'll follow up. Anyway, love after death is bonkers. Wow. Well, I, another one of my faves. Dang. So good. Unique. All right, I saved this oil for last because it has coffee in it. And coffee will just blow you up. And it'll be really difficult to smell other oils. So if you're ever doing what I'm doing, you get your package and you're opening up all your oils and you have coffee ones, save those for last. The coffee note is so strong. And this is the Velvet Brew. We have top notes of roasted coffee. We have a middle of cream, base of vanilla, musk, and sweet. <laughs> okay, this is so stupid. This is, okay. It's very real, very true coffee. Though it's more like espresso. It's got that bitterness, you know, with a, with a black coffee. I think this would be great in a candle. It's so true, true, true coffee. Oh yeah, that bitterness is like blowing my mind. Cause it's like, oh my, it's like fresh brewed espresso. Like, you know, tangy, bitter, delicious. So I use coffee in body products. So I have a whipped scrub that I do. And I gotta tell you, like the coffee fragrance oil that I use is always just shy of being like a true coffee. It's too sweet with like cream and like a whole bunch of other shit in it. This is straight coffee. And it does have a bunch of other shit in it, but it's not, it's not super creamy. It's not super vanilla -y or musky or sweet. It's like perfect. All that to say, this is the Velvet Brew is the best uh, coffee fragrance oil on the market, in my opinion. We need to pop these in some wax, but I've got to tell you what my faves are. My favorites, fav, 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 favorites, the Tam Dao for show and the Cranberry Faya for two completely different reasons. One is seasonal. This for sure will be around, though I argue the Cranberry Faya, depending upon what you blend it with, could be year round. Doesn't have to be a fall fall fragrance. These two, okay, and then my other favorites are, we're gonna go top five, because it's hard to pick, uh, in no particular order. The Silk Oak, best one. The First Snow. The first fragrance oil as well that has eucalyptus in it and I didn't start choking. Love. And then, of course, the Love After Death, wow. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of iterations with the Cranberry Fire. I'm gonna put it with my other two oils. I'm also just gonna put it with one of the other oils. I wanna see what it looks like. Um, and then I'm gonna put the Love After Death with the Cranberry and my third oil, so we're gonna do a triple blend. I wanna add some smokiness into the Cranberry. I think that's gonna be extra special and super unique. Um, I think it's gonna work. We won't know until it gets in there. And then I, I need to know what the lodge is like in wax because it did have that weird sort of pine solly fragrance, but let's see how it behaves in wax. Uh, the first snow, 
We're gonna put in wax, peculiar pine, obviously. I also would love to know how the peculiar pine performs with the cranberry fire. I think that could be a nice blend as well. Sassy girl pumpkin, she's gonna go in some wax. I'm gonna let her go separate because I am I need to know how she performs in wax before I start blending because, uh, again, it's a me thing. So um, I'm going to put the Tam Dao into some perfume and that's it, that's a lot. Let's get into it. Okay, so I didn't hit record when we made wax melts, so it was more like me, not we. Uh, wow, crushing it today, Carrie. So I'm just gonna talk through, now that they've set up, I'm gonna talk through what I smelled, what happened when they hit the wax. I use these four ounce jelly jaws from Candle Science. They're awesome, but let's start with the Lodge. That one was a little pine sawly cleanery to me. Um, when it hit the wax, it definitely softened up a bit. The lemon and the pine are the most prominent notes that I smell in the lodge. Um, and they just completely bloomed. Um, it's still not my favorite. It still kind of has that, it's just been freshly cleaned space. So we'll see how it cures and we'll come back in a week or so and we'll talk about it. All right, this is the triple blend that I did with the cinnamon and the love after death with the third oil. Oh my God, Though that hit the wax and it was like, yeah. The first snow, this is even better in wax. Oh my gosh, it is so, it is like a punch in the face with like that crisp, cold, cold air, you know? Yeah, is there snow on the ground? Definitely. Do you have a hat on? Do you have your gloves on? Do you have a scarf? Mm. Oh yeah, it is so freaking good. The other one was the Peculiar Pine. This was very piney time forward. It hit the wax and it was like, it was so herbaceous. It was fantastic and it's really good. You don't even need to blend this. This is a great standalone oil. You could add a fruit to it. You could add some spices to it, but honestly, dang, it's so, so good. The Sassy Pumpkin. Did I smell buttered popcorn? Yes. When it hit the wax, did I still smell it? I did, I did. But after I stirred it and poured it, I don't get any buttered popcorn. <laughs> it's me. This smells so good. You know what it is? It's the chai supported by the pumpkin. So still similar to what we smelled on the strip, but better. This smells so good. I don't know, maybe I think chai spices smell like popcorn. I don't know. I am a chai drinker, so I have no idea what's wrong with me. That is excellent. Uh, this is a really nice pumpkin fragrance that isn't like so gourmandy. You could absolutely blend this for sure um, with the Velvet Brew. You guys, it's so good. Oh my God, you have to be careful with the coffee because it will quickly overtake because the pumpkin, yeah, it's so light. It's a pumpkin chai. It's like chai and then pumpkin. You just have to be careful. Oh my gosh, so good. Velvet brew with the sassy pumpkin. It's a great, great blend. The cranberry fire is amazing. On its own, it's, it's so good. It's cinnamony but cranberry, like super tot forward. Um, I did blend that with the Peculiar Pine because I thought those are so good. They're like, what is that together? Oh, and it is, it is Christmas. It is so beautiful. So because I got my oils early, thank God, got them into wax. Now that we're here and the sale ends tonight, I'm just gonna go and take advantage to get that discount, get my big bottle of the Cranberry Fire. That does it, that was really fun and very successful. Like nine out of the 11 were, um, were excellent for me. I love doing first impressions videos. If you enjoyed this one and you wanna see more and you wanna to continue to hang out, check out my playlist right here of all the other fragrance oil first impressions videos that I've done. I would say this was a, like a resounding success. Now I have a new answer when people ask me, what's your favorite Baccarat? <laughs> All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. Until the next time, I'll see you then. Bye.